welcome to day 12 of the program. Um, today's scale is A flat major and F minor. A flat major has um, four flats, B, E, A, D. And the scale intervals for A flat is A flat is our tonic, B flat is our major second, C is our major third, D flat is our perfect fourth, E flat is our perfect fifth, F is our major sixth, G is our major seventh, and A flat is our perfect eight. Our scale degrees is tonic is A flat, supertonic is B flat, median is C, subdominant D flat, dominant E flat, submedian F, leading tone G, octave A flat. And then we have our triad chords. Our first chord is A flat major, A flat C, E flat. Our second chord is B flat minor, B flat D flat F, third chord is C minor, C, E flat, G. Our fourth chord is D flat major, D flat, F, A flat. Our fifth chord is E flat major, E flat, G, B flat. Our sixth chord is F minor, F, A flat, C. And then our seventh chord is G diminished, G, B flat, and D flat. So go ahead and try um, the A flat scale for one octave or two. And then what we're going to talk about next is the classical period. So the term classical period, uh, the classical music, has two meanings. The broader meaning includes all Western art music from the medieval era to the tw 2000. And the second is the specific meaning refers to the music from 1750s to the early 1820s. So we are discussing the specific meaning in this section. So from the classical period expanded upon the Baroque period, adding a maturely influential new sound, song form, the sonata. This period also saw the development of the concerto, symphony, sonata, trio, and quartet. So the classical period is most known for its pressure for structural clarity in music. Though this period didn't add any majorly new um, instrumentation, the harpsichord was officially replaced with the piano or forte piano. Orchestras increased in size, range, and power, and the instrumentation overall had a lighter, more evident texture than Baroque music, making it less complicated. Notable composers from the classical period include the music giants, Josef Haydn, Ludwig von Beethoven, Franz Schubert, and of course, Wolf, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. We're gonna be listening to one of um, Mozart's famous pieces, Rondo a la Turca, from his piano sonata number 11 that I will link up for you just to get a sense of the era. And our most important composer of the classical era that we're going to talk about is Beethoven, who is our composer of the day. Ludwig von Beethoven was born in 1770 in Bonn, Germany. He was a German composer and pianist who was widely considered to be one of the greatest musical geniuses of all time. Beethoven's innovative compositions combined vocals and instruments widening the scope of sonata, symphony, concerto, and quartet. Beethoven is a crucial transitional figure connecting the classical and romantic ages of Western music. Beethoven was born in 1770, but he mistakenly believed that he was born two years later in 1772 and stubbornly insisted on the incorrect date even when presented with official papers stating that he was born in 1770. His father, Johann von Beethoven, was a, a mediocre court singer, better known for his alcoholism than any musical ability. Beethoven's grandfather, Kapellmeister Ludwig von Beethoven, was born was Bonn, Germany's most prosperous and eminent musician a source of endless pride for young Beethoven. Beethoven's father began teaching him music with an extraordinary rigor and brutality that affected Beethoven for the rest of his life. He studied the violin and clavier, which is a keyboard instrument, with his father, as well as taking additional lessons from organists around town. 
Beethoven's father arranged for Ludwig's first public recital when he was seven years old. But his father uh, was hoping that his young son will be recognized as a musical prodigy like Mozart put and put on the performance bill that his son was six, not seven, his real age. Beethoven performed impressively, but there was no press to recognize him. Beethoven attended Latin school, and he struggled with mathematics and spelling his entire life, and he was at best an average student. Beethoven said, music comes to me more readily than words. At the age of 10, Beethoven withdrew from school to study music full-time, and at the age of 12, Be Beethoven published his first composition, a set of piano variations on a theme. When Beethoven was 14, his father was no longer able to support his family due to his voice decaying and his alcoholism worsening. Beethoven then formally requested an official position as an assistant court organist, despite his young age. They accepted his request, and Beethoven was put on the court payroll with a modest annual salary of 150 florins. So back then, that would have been like $85 per year. So he was the breadwinner of his family when he was 14 years old. There was speculation that Beethoven met Mozart and studied with him when he moved to Vienna at the age of 17. Tradition has it upon hearing Beethoven, Mozart said, keep your eyes on him. Someday he will give the world something to talk about. When the Holy Roman Emperor Joseph II died in 1790, 19-year-old Beethoven received the high honor of composing a musical mem memorial in his honor. Bach's composition was never performed, most assuming the young musician has proven unequal to the task. It is not known what was the case. However, a century later, Brahms discovered that Beethoven had in fact composed a beautiful and noble piece um, entitled Cantata on the Death of Emperor George, Joseph II, which is now considered his earliest masterpiece. Beethoven won many patrons among the leading citizens of the Viennese aristocracy, who provided him with lodging and funds. Beethoven made his long-awaited public debut in Vienna when he was 25. Despite his extraordinary output of beautiful music, Beethoven was lonely and frequently miserable throughout his adult life. He was short-tempered, absent-minded, greedy, and suspicious to the point of paranoia. Beethoven fought with his brothers, his publishers, housekeepers, pupils, students, and patrons. One um, example is that Beethoven attempted to break a chair over the head of Prince Lichnowsky, one of his closest friends and most loyal patron. Another time, he stood in the doorway of Prince Libakowitz's palace, shouting for all to hear, Libakowitz is a donkey. <laughs> so in Beethoven's 30s is when he recognized that he was losing his hearing. Despite losing his hearing, Beethoven actually wrote some of his best works during that time. Beethoven died at the age of 56 because of liver problems. So now there is a museum in Beethoven's house in Bonn, Germany, displaying um, all his instruments, his compositions, his, a concert hall, his the artifacts. And there are at least 300 people employed for the um, Beethoven House Museum and whose life's work is to uh, rediscover um, more of Beethoven's compositions and just all these things, which uh, a couple pieces has um, been um, discovered a years ago. So Beethoven House was been founded in 1889, has been up, open ever since. So that's a little bit on our composer of the day for the classical period. Um, the second part to your project is today is to write down music colors that you like. If you like minor keys, if you like major keys, if you like hearing these kind of like feelings in music or something like that, I want you to think about that and write them down so that way Saturday when we, when we are in that part of the process of um, 
creating a song, we can add, you can be able to add um, what you like to it. So that's that for today. I hope you have a great day and we will see you tomorrow.